Thank you this morning. I want to give glory to you when to search your name, our Alpha and Omega. I accept your praise in the name of Jesus. And since we are your work, Father, speak to us in the name of Jesus. Speak for the throne of grace. Speak for the throne of mercy this morning. Let us understand your word and let your word bless us abundantly. For we pray in Jesus' name. Praise the living Jesus. May you be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, this morning we want to share the word of God on how to labor in vain. How to labor in vain. Those who that want to enjoy the Bible version, you go to the back. But here, I go in the And the people, the say, Praise the Lord. How to live up in vain. Uh, it's a negative word this morning. Praise the Lord. If you want to live up in vain, you don't want to enjoy your labor, you don't want to have harvest. There are ways of uh, doing that, and that's what they are going to explain for us today. Invariably, the opposite. And we don't want to labor in vain. There are certain things you must be doing. Our God is God of labor. Right from the from the Garden of Eden, He has commanded man to take care of the land, to till the land, to labor on the land, to produce His uh, fruits. Hallelujah. So man wants us, God wants us to labor and work for ourselves in order to make a living. So if anybody is lazy, if anybody is carefree, that person is not supposed to enjoy anything from God. Because God has laid it down. That man must labor, man must walk, must subdue the land. Praise the Lord. But as we are laboring, as we labor, we have enemies that are always targeting our efforts. We have adversaries that may not want our war to show, that may not want us to reap our blessing, that may not want us to enjoy our affairs. Praise the Lord. Amen. There are enemies like that that propose us. So we must know how to deal with the enemy. Praise the Lord. Uh, in the book of uh, Agai, book of Agai, chapter 1, Agai, chapter 1, verse 6 to 9. I will read here. He have so much and bring in little. He eat, but you have not enough. He drink, but you are not filled with the drink. He clothes you, but there is no more. He that earned wages, earned wages to put into a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountains and bring wood and build the house and I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified said the Lord you look for much and lo it came to little and when he brought it home I did blow upon it why said the Lord of course because of my heart that is waste and ye run every man unto his own house Praise the Lord. This prophet was reminding the Israelites that they did much for the little. They had they are not feeling. They put themselves, but they are, they are still feeling old. And they had the reason why. Because they neglected the house of God. They didn't pay attention in building the house of God. I would say they were building their own house, but they didn't build the house of God. They didn't take care of the house of God. 
these are one of the ways to labor in vain. When we don't pay attention to the things of God, when we are preoccupied with our own life, preoccupied with our own success, our own future, but we neglect the things of God, we don't do, do the needful in the hands of God, that mercy will be laboring in vain. They will never be satisfied. That was what the Bible said. That person will not be satisfied. Hallelujah. As recorded in the book of Agai. That number one is that we must pay attention to the things of the Lord. We must be mindful of what is going on in the church. We must be building the house of God. We must be contributing to the progress of the church one way or the other. That is when you can be satisfied with whatever God is providing for you. Without that, one may be laboring in vain. One may be laboring in vain. Praise the Lord. That is number one. Neglecting the things of the God of God. Neglecting the house of God. Not contributing to God's thing. Can limit our blessing. Can make us to labor in vain. Number two, building outside God. Building things outside God. When we engage in anything, any business, any venture outside God, we are bound to labor in vain. If God is not the foundation of such things, we don't carry God along whatever we are doing, we may be laboring in vain. We may not succeed and we may not prosper. Anything we do outside God. Jonah was sent to Nineveh to go and preach. But he went outside the God's field. He went to Nineveh to go and preach. We are the we are God did not send him. God did not send him Living. Praise the Lord. That he was not sent to Tashish. And he went there. But along the line, the storm came to his ship. And our ship was about to wreck. He wanted to destroy the life of those people, the passenger and the ship. Before he confessed, and they had to throw him inside the sea. And the fish swallowed him up brought him to the, the place where he will get to where God sent him. Anything that we do outside God, we are, we are always putting problem for ourselves. We don't carry God along what we are doing, back to faith. Before we start anything at all, God will be the foundation of that thing. If you want to take major decision in life, let God be decided. Let God decide for you. Marriage, let God answer you. Let God lead you. To marriage. If God is not in your marriage, there will be storm, there will be chaos, there will be problem which you will be not able to withstand. God is the number one factor. You want to travel out, consult God first. Let God lead you. Let God instruct you on the way to go. Praise the Lord. If you want to start the business, allow God pray very well and see the face of God. In anything we do outside God, we are laboring in vain. We are laboring in vain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Naomi was a good mother. A good wife in the house, in the husband's uh, house. But he decided to leave Bethlehem Judea one day and go to <coughs> go to Moab because there was a little farming in Bethlehem Judea. They didn't consult God, they didn't ask. They went to Moab. 
Immediately they got to Moab. The husband died. The two children died. And there was a news that the Judea has been blessed. Praise the Lord. He has, he has to return. But at, at our return, he said it's not called, called our blessed. It's called our marriage. Praise the Lord. Bitterness. Hallelujah. Because he says he went in full but came back empty. That is laboring in vain. Because they are walking outside the God's plan. How many of us are taking care on our own today? How many of us are getting the cancer of the flesh? Cancer of people that are not God. Ungodly, ungodly cancer. And it's not the cancer of God that we are following. <coughs> Hallelujah. We are writing to labor in vain to do such. We must know how to walk with God. David was the man that walked with God. He will always ask questions. <coughs> Should I pursue? Should I go to this war? He will always ask questions. We must be asking God questions. And God is always ready to answer us. Just seek and we find. Not to be open. <coughs> Praise the Lord. And heart shall be given unto you. Let us be asking God about our future so that we may not be laboring in vain. Praise the Lord. The rich fool in the Bible, read the story of a rich fool. He suffered for plenty of that year. And he said, I will pull down my bank and do the bigger one. And pull my resources into that bank. I will now relax and say to my soul, you have plenty things now. Begin to rejoice. And that who said, the rich fool, today his soul is required from him. That today he is going to die. Hallelujah. That all the things that is taught, who will benefit from it? He has lost his soul. Only the stranger will take control of his estate. Hallelujah. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, find from verse 1. The Bible narrated the story. He said, yes, uh, If they have seen under the sun, which is much more among men, somebody that the Lord blessed to the extent that he did not see the game, who was both blessed, as resources, as money, as fame. He said, but the Lord did not give him the opportunity to eat from his labor. Praise the Lord. He said, it's the disease of one man. Somebody that has been blessed, has done everything right. He doesn't live, he didn't live long to enjoy that blessing. How many people are falling victim of something today? At the age of 40, they become a professor. Stage of 30, they have gotten their PhD, and then the only thing you will see is the obituary, the poster obituary. Praise the Lord. They have not done anything in life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must always ask God in all things. We must not use the template of anybody to judge our life. You must not adopt, adopt anybody or adopt anybody. Don't use anybody's lifestyle. Don't use anybody's story to build your own life. You are much more different in the hand of God. God created you differently. You need to meet with that God to shape your life. Hallelujah. In America, Obama was very young. He retired at the age of maybe 55. Praise the Lord. He retired at the age of maybe 55. And Trump started at the age of 77 or so. He became president at the age of 77. Praise the Lord. They are, they are life different. They didn't live the same life. Praise the Lord. 
they need to save life. Somebody, we have uh, graduated, got a job, praise the Lord, before you. And you will be older than that person. And when God is going to visit you, you will be more than that person. You will be higher than that person tomorrow. <coughs> praise the Lord. That is the Lord's dream. And it says, my fellows in our eyes. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Lord was a person to Abraham. Praise the Lord. Was a nephew to Abraham. And uh, they were fighting. All the their workers were fighting. And Abraham said, Well, come on, choose where you want to go. Cool. You think you are my third dog? Choose whatever where you want to go. If you go to the right and you go to the left. If you choose the forward and you choose backward. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Gave him that, that plan check. And Lord did not respect the elders. Ah, you are my elder. Choose wherever you want to choose. Wherever you choose, I will choose another place. He didn't say that. The Bible said he lifted his eyes. He lifted his eyes. Looking at the all the places. And he finds a good place. Well-nourished place, fertile place, and he chose the place. He didn't consult God. He didn't consult the elders. He chose the land of Gomorrah, Sodom and Gomorrah. He went there, he prospered in that land. There was desert for Abraham to choose. Abraham was in desert, and God placed him inside that desert. But when Lord got to Sodom and Gomorrah, he, he prospered in that land. But there was judgment of God in that land. And it was through the grace of uh, Abraham that the Lord chose that I want to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Praise the Lord. And he said, I have my people there. I was pleading for Sodom and Gomorrah that if you find a certain number of people, we will destroy them. I will not destroy them. But at the point, Abraham stopped pleading. I have to instruct Lord, don't take any wrong for your life from Sodom and Gomorrah because God wanted to destroy that man. He didn't take anything out of that man. That man. So he labored in vain in the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. May we not labor in vain in Jesus' name. Lord labored in vain. Praise the Lord. Because he didn't put God in all the what is doing. It is not the beginning that matters. It is the end that matters. It is the end of things that matters. Things may be right initially. May be we'll making it. May be successful. But at the end of the day, what will happen at the end of the day? What is going to be the end of what you are doing? It's God that knows it. And that God is what we stick to. I've shared a story of somebody, Nigeria, that went to like Liberia. For 27 years in Liberia, he made such a he had big, big companies. They married, they had children. But when the, 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 the war broke out from Liberia, all these companies were burnt. The, the children and the wife were killed. And it was only rescued two sheep to Nigeria. I had only one dialogue back with him. And he uttered the statement. By the time I wanted to go to Liberia, if I had somebody told me that I should not go, how will it be in this, this thing? He was old at that time. He was maybe 70 plus when he was narrating the story. Where are you going to start again? Before he went, he didn't know that something that evil will be for him. But God has seen the beginning from the end, will have told him that please don't go. Some people in Ukraine now, many Nigerians have lost their job. Some people that have good business there, they have lost their business, they have lost their job. Some will return to Nigeria empty handed. 
But when you are planning to go, today carry God along. Today inform God. Today listen to instruction of God. Praise the Lord. So building our life outside God is fighting to labor in vain. And that's number two. Praise the Lord. Number three, walking for one's glory. If all what you want is you want to take glory, you want to take credit outside God, you are writing to failure. You are going to build in vain. Praise the Lord. In the book of uh, Colossians, Book of Revolution. Chapter Chapter three. Verse twenty three to twenty four. Revolution three twenty three to twenty four. And whatever you do, do it actively as to the Lord and not unto men. Knowing that of the Lord he shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. And whatever you do, do it aptly, as to the Lord and not unto men. Praise the Lord. We always glorify ourselves. We always want to glorify man. We will not give glory to God for whatever God and done for us, we are writing to failure. God is the one that is helping us. If anybody is going to help you, it is God that will show that person. It is God that will stipulate that person. Go and help so and so. But most of the time, we give glory to one. We give glory to ourselves. Somebody that made first class, we will boast him. I'm very brilliant. I'm very brilliant. Nobody can beat me in that course. Nobody can gets my mark. Nobody can match me. Who are you? Outside God. Give glory to God. Praise the Lord. I will give glory to men. I ain't not for so and so that help me. I wouldn't have been the level where I am. We, we neglect God. We neglect God. And did it for us. Praise the Lord. I remember one of our landlords he has opportunity to travel to Jerusalem, was sponsored by government. Jerusalem. And uh, people prayed for him. He, when he was seeking to that position, he came to the church and told us that there is name because among people that uh, were submitted are going to be sponsored. Out of many days, that few are going to be chosen. We are going to be chosen. And we prayed for him, for favor. And it was favor. Because among people they picked and they traveled to Jerusalem. When he came back, praise the Lord. Everybody was happy with him, was happy to shoot a party. Only all the party members, because he was a politician, only all the members, all the people from the neighborhood who killed cow. He celebrated, fed people, they were rejoicing. But when you come to the Thanksgiving in the church, he bought 15 inputs to go and uh, present to the church as Thanksgiving. Praise the Lord. So, how, how much the 15 uh, in? Compared to car, compared to food, which he has prepared to feed people, this is his place of priority. Hallelujah. That is what we do. We celebrate men, we give glory to men more than God. Hallelujah. We glorify men more than God. And God hates such things. Say, whatever you do, do it aptly as for the Lord. And not unto men who go and prostrate 
for men. But when we come to the church, even when we ask them to stand up, we sit down. When we ask them to, to lay down, we sit. We are not honoring God, but we honor men. They will dress properly to go and meet man. The best clothes you will wear to go and see king, to go and see important men. But when you are coming to church, you dress sharply. You, you, you dress, you know, with rags. You appear, uh, if you appear, uh, you are not appearing neat in the presence of God. You always give the God nothing. You present yourself in, in, in a bad manner, bad image, but you appear nice, you appear cute to men. It's not acceptable. It's not acceptable. You must give God the best. Come to the church with your best dress. Don't reserve your dress for a special occasion. Don't reserve your, 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 your shoe for a special occasion. Always come with your best to the church. The money that you cannot pay in the church, that is what you give to people outside. You give people outside money. Praise the Lord. But when you come to the church, you pay nothing. You pay small in the presence of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So working for man's glory, Working for your own glory is right to labor in vain. That thing that you glorify apart from God will cease to exist. We cease to exist. If God answers from your life, you are not. Hallelujah. You are not. The book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians. Chapter 6, verse 6 to 7. Ephesians 6, 6 to 7. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servant of Christ, doing the will of God from the perfect heart, with good will doing, with Good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. The Bible is emphasizing it. It should not glorify men. It should glorify God. Our service was directed to our Almighty God. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. So, not working for your own glory or for the glory of man. God hates it when we are glorifying man other than him. Hallelujah. Amen. Number four, rely on our own understanding. Rely on our own understanding. Hallelujah. Amen. I will read book of uh, number, number chapter 20, verses 8 to 12. Relying on your own understanding. Take the rod and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rod before the eyes, and he shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rod, so thou shalt give the congregation and their beast drink. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord. As commanded him, and Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, Here now, ye rebels, must be fresh water out of this rock. And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and the abyss also. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because he believed me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, he shall not bring this condition into the land which I have given unto you. 
We are the Moses. Get wrong in this aspect. We are the Moses missed it in this aspect. Praise the Lord. Moses that have been laboring, carrying the Israelite right from Egypt for almost 38 years, and it got to a point, God rejected him because he was using his own understanding. Man, this for what the Bible said, take the rod and gather thou assembly together, thou and Aaron. That's what said. Thy brother, and speak unto the rock before their eyes, and he shall give forth his water. Bible said he should speak to the rock, but instead he struck the rock. But you see, they would understand that the Lord has given the rod to perform miracles everywhere. The rod opened the Red Sea, uh, the, 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 the rod stopped the biting of a uh, of snakes, whoever was uh, beaten by snakes, whenever they look at the rock, will be healed. So he told that God will be using the same thing, praise the Lord, to heart. But at this point, he was a speak to the rock, destroy the rock, and miss it. And God did not forgive him. He said, You will not carry these people to the promised land. You will not even see this. Uh, promised land. Many of us, we are using our own understanding rather than the Spirit of God to guide ourselves to do things. We do whatever we like in the presence of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whenever people share testimony of how they are blessed, we copy that testimony. We also receive similarity and it may not work for us. God instructed somebody, go and use your car and give it to somebody. And in the way, and God bought about two back for that person. God led that person. And somebody listened to that testimony. He went to go and give his car away. Praise the Lord. He didn't receive anything back. I was complaining. God, why? Praise the Lord. If God instructed, has instructed the first person, God works in different ways. God may not want you to give it out. God may use another means. But we always want to use the same means, the same way, our own understanding to work. I'll share a testimony here. Somebody that called me from the UK. I've never met him. He called me. Somebody gave him my number. He said, yeah, Pastor, I've been struggling here for the past five years. I have no job. I didn't have any paper to stay. I was struggling from one place to another. But my wife has even pushed me out that I should leave the house for her. Hallelujah. When I prayed for him, God gave me revelation of the position he was. And I told him, I saw you in the very ground, naked, walking around the cross there, with the tombs there. And I told him, your prayer point, we are going to pray that Lord clothe me with the cloth of honor. Take me out of the death and clothe me with the cloth of honor. He prayed that prayer for three days. I received a letter Come and do interview. Praise the Lord. And I pray about it. And God said, it's, it's, it's job. It's, it's job. So when the result came out, it was second. Came second for the one to give the first person the job. And he called me as a pastor. The result had come out. I was in second position. And they said they are going to give the job to the first person. And I prayed again. And God said to pray that that first person, he should get another job. He will not accept that job. We pray about it. And they called him that, ah, Mr. Man, come and receive. Because the first person has rejected the job. So we are offering that job. 
called me and was praising God. The wife was singing on the phone. Hallelujah. He got his prayer. At the time he was doing PhD, he applied for scholarship. When he applied for scholarship, he went for interview and was placed in third position. And the policy is for two people. Praise the Lord. If you share with me, I pray. He saw the nature of my prayer and he reminded me, Pastor, she may be like that, but I see anything I'm supposed to dash you. Why don't you even pray that the two people should not accept the scholarship? Why can't you pray that they should not accept that scholarship? Because you pray that somebody should not get job. But I said, that's the Holy Spirit. That's how he directed me. For this occasion, is different. God did not instruct me to pray like that. I'm not using my own understanding. But I told him that God will surely do it. But how he will do it, I don't know. But God will do it for me. Hallelujah. After two weeks, he called me and shouted me that, Ah, Pastor, thank God. They have given me scholarship. I said, How did God do it? He said, the Two people, they are going to join the European country. And once they join the European country, the patient is free for them. They don't need scholarship. And that's how they extended the scholarship to him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he wanted me to pray the way I pray in the first place. At this visit, understand the man, the man, understand the God, we cannot know the way of God. God was a man of ways. We may be thinking that God will come to the front, he will come from the back. You may think we come from the left, we can come from the, the right. That is why we are limiting God. That's why we are not intending of God. When we pray, let's leave it to God. Let leave answer to God. God will answer in his own way. Praise the Lord. So Moses is so understanding. Instead of speaking to the Lord, show the Lord. And that was how he missed it. Praise the Lord. How to never invade that we are discussing. How not to make it. How we can fail as our work and discouragement. Number five is discouragement. If we are easily discouraged, if we are easily discouraged, we may not, we may be laboring in vain. If we are not courageous, and the Lord called Joshua, he said, be strong and be courageous. You are the one that is going to defy the land for Israel. Be strong. Be courageous. We must be strong. We must not be weak. We must be strong in our hearts. We must not accept failure. Praise the Lord. We must not be easily defeated. We must be strong and resolute before we can make it in life. The Israelites, when they got to a point, Moses sent spies to the land of Canaan. And observe the land. Twelve people went. When they came back, ten people brought negative reports that we saw giants in that land. Even the land, the land was good, was full of uh, crops, fertile land, but giants are there. Heroes are there. Champions are there. We cannot occupy such land. We are like grasshopper, and the congregation begin to cry. They didn't see it, but they believed the report. They started crying. They started crying. It was through the, the, the action of uh, Joshua and Caleb. And still, the people said, We can conquer them. God has given them to us, God will deliver it to our hands. And those people were crying, they were planning to go back to Egypt. They wanted to appoint a captain that will lead them back to Egypt. So that is discouragement. People that are always discouraged always labor in vain. They always labor in vain. You will rest on it. If you fail, write it again. Stand up and read and write it again. You fail in examination, you fail in business, write something again and do it. Don't resign to, 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 to faith. Don't go back. Always go ahead. Always go forward. 
The Sandy said, if I fall seven times, I will rise up again. I will rise up again. I fall seven times. Hallelujah. The enemy that we are fighting, God, Jesus Christ has won them. He has won them. The labor, the type of job we are trying to struggle to do, some people have done it and have succeeded. The examination we are writing, many people have wrote such exam and they are passed. So why is your own be different? That's the question you have to say. And you can come when you are not discouraged. I will say morning we are there for a night. But joy comes when? Joy comes when? For a sorrow. Praise the Lord. When you are going to be a and your body will grow. Praise the Lord. Don't be discouraged. Always be resolute. Always encourage yourself. Always be strong so that your labor will not be in vain. The last one is uh, join the evil forces. If you want to labor in vain, join evil forces. If you want to use evil ways, you get to start up. You want to use evil ways to succeed. You want to use shortcuts to make it in life. You are writing to labor in vain. Everything will be in vain if you attach yourself to the devil. If you want to use devil to get promotion. You want to use evil way to get money. You want to use evil way to get husband. You want to use evil way to get wife. <coughs> We are going to labor in vain because the enemy will require something. Will require something that we will be not able to give. People that read do ritual money, they usually pay price higher than themselves. Some use their life, use the life of their children, use the life of their wife, use the life of their husband to pay back. The women, mothers, that said that it's because of these children that are entered into secret courts. So they are not pushing up back yet. I'm a jail, I'm not doing my power here. I'm a brave little way back to my yard. I'm a come here back and slowly live. I'm a little like my yard, so not here, yeah. You remember your vow. You remember your covenant. It is time to pay back. That man they bought in vain because they will never enjoy the, the, the child. Praise God. There's nothing evil. They have good results. It's always negative and bad results. Amen. One politician went for purchasing, he's looking for a position. Looking for a position. And he told him in that uh, place that they should use the madman, kill the madman, use his blood, and prepare, use it to prepare food for like people of people. And when they got hold of the madman, they thought they wanted to go and uh, treat the man, kill the, took the blood, and be careful for people. And he did reach out it, and he got to the position that he wanted. He has served. But one way or the other, at the point, the children started dying one by one. The children started dying one by one. Praise the Lord. And the wife was mentally healed. The wife was mentally healed. There was running enter skelter. He went to the mountain where he revealed the secret. Praise the Lord. That the people of God should pray for him. That this is his problem. That somebody told him that you should be praying from one mountain to another. And be asking for forgiveness. 
if God will forgive him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. These are the things that people in the world are doing. But they always labor in vain because all those things they build will be destroyed. They will not make success. They will not prosper. Praise the Lord. Amen. I will say we should tell the evil man that he will not, he will not prosper. They will not prosper. They will not make it. So don't join yourself with evil. Wait on the Lord. The time or your time is coming. But there is time and season for everybody. Your time is coming. When the Lord will visit you, when you wait on that time, then things will be right with you. You will not labor in vain. Hallelujah. We will not labor in vain in the name of Jesus. So these are the things that we must avoid. We must try and build the house of God. We must not build our life outside God. We must not work for the, our own glory or glory of any man. We must not rely on our own understanding. We should not be discouraged and should not join evil forces for success at all times. Let us rise up our feet and let us pray. Lord, I will not labor in vain. I shall not labor in faith. Say it. Lord, prosper all the work of my heart. Say the Lord will prosper your work. Pros prosper all the work of my hand. Don't let me labor in vain. Let us begin to pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. You have realized your mistake today. I will not labor in vain any spot. I will prosper in all my undertaking. I will succeed in the name of Jesus. I will not do anything outside your outside your course. I will not seek my own glory or glory of any man. I will not rely on my own understanding again in the name of Jesus. I will rely on you, God. I shall not be discouraged. I will not join good forces. Lord, I reject labor in vain in the name of Jesus. Let me prosper. Let me succeed. In Jesus' name we are praying. In Jesus' name we are praying. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I commit your people to your hand. You shall not labor in vain in the name of Jesus. All the factors that can make your labor in vain, you have become them in the name of Jesus. You will prosper in the name of Jesus. Go and prosper. Your marriage will prosper. Your education will prosper. Your family will prosper. Your work will prosper. In the name of Jesus. You will not be a failure in life. In the name of Jesus. I said you will not fail in the name of Jesus. You will succeed. You will make it. It shall be well with you. So shall it be. In Jesus name we are praying. Give me big hallelujah. God bless you all, in the name of Jesus.